every creature that moves along the ground. Every kind of bird, everything with wings. Every living creature. In the 45th year of the Dakar's life, on the fourth day of the first week, all the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of the heavens were opened and the flood waters came on the earth and the waters rose and increased greatly on the earth. I don't know what Rally Ray did to upset them, but whoever you believe the Almighty to be, she was very, very cross yesterday. The route from Alula to Chael became a highway to Chael. And rain fell on the Dakar all day and all night. And there was nowhere to escape the waters of the flood. In the mountains for the first 100 kilometers of stage four, but these are enormous mountains of sand before some pretty tricky navigation. And by the next day of the first month of the year, the water had dried up from the earth. And Skylar did remove his helmet from his head and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. But it was still really quite chilly first thing this morning, so stretching, gloves, and warm-ups before Sanders, Howes and Klein, the top three yesterday, were first out. Australia's stage three winner wasn't at his brilliant best this morning. He's not a fan of going out first and finished eighth. His time included 3.58 in bonuses and a two minute penalty. Mason Klein, on the other hand, loves opening the way. We don't often see riders fighting for the front, but he and Chucky were having a right old battle for the bonuses, proof that these new rules are having the desired effect. And it's a measure of respect for the young American that his more experienced rival was so stoked to get past him for those extra seconds. Worse was to come for Klein, having led for over 150K, a fuel intake problem cost him 65 kilometers from the finish. And we checked it now and it was uh, yeah, with the fuel, there was water inside uh, the fuel. He needs to drain fuel from the front tank, put it in the rear tank to make sure that there was no water in. Yeah, that cost him 10 minutes, unfortunately. If Mason was in decline, there's a party going on at Skyler's house. Top 10 on every stage since the prologue, top three in the last three, and up to second overall. There's a long way to go in this Dakar, but right now it looks like the sky's the limit for Skyler. Fan favorite Pablo Quintanilla's results so far have been a picture of consistency, but today he jumped up the overall standings and powered his way to second on the special. His nickname, Quinta Fondo, literally means fifth gear and foot to the floor, but I reckon Pablo was using all six speeds of his Honda today. Bang, bang, Barreda's back. Already a Dakar hero. This morning, the Spaniard was five behind Depre and Peda Hansel's record of 33 specials. Now, it's just four. I feel good, I feel strong. I, I keep going on the race, so still there is only the, the four stages. Still we have uh, 10 stages more in front, but uh, I'm happy, I'm happy for the work on did now. As I mentioned yesterday, this year, the rider opening the way receives one and a half seconds per kilometre out in front between the start and the refuelling point. And that's helped Daniel Sanders to stay up top and Howes and Klein too. Today was the day for petrol problems. Seb Bula, Ross Branch both run out and number 91 is Mike Wiedemann. I think it is really, really disappointed because yesterday I win the stage in the Malemoto and that was really good today, but now, I think now it's over. His number's red because he's one of the riders competing without any assistance. 
Javi Vega was the quickest of them today. Sharon Moore leads overall. Moreno Flores was the early leader, and Dukar is fighting back. But quads is not for you if you want a nail-bitingly competitive title race. The man who's won every single day extended his overall lead to 47 minutes with another one. Giroud is to quads what PSG is to Ligue 1. No one else stands a chance. Galactico. BRX 2023, down 15 punctures on Monday, high Tuesday triumph, and down today, Terra Nova turns around. I have a back injury from when I used to ride a motorcycle. It happened a couple of years ago. And when we jumped today, I felt the pain again there. It was a nasty injury that has never gone away. It was extremely painful in the car to the extent that I decided to come back here to the bivouac. It seems that this is a Dakar of changing fortunes for every team and every driver. The question today would be, who would rise and who would fall? Lucas Cruz is Carlos Sainz's co-driver and everything was fine until he started using Waze. Are you sure this is the best route, Lucas? Absolutely sure, yes. It says you should slide along a huge steep sand dune for 200 meters. But shouldn't we be turning left? Not yet, no. But Lucas, it's fine, Carlos. Trust me, there's a left turn coming up. Here. Now, Carlos, I told you, left. Straight on now. Sorry, Lucas. And they did go straight into third. Yazid Al Raji put in another solid performance today to cement his position in the higher reaches of the general classification. Fifth on the day. Toyota teammate and world champion Nasser Al Atiyah played it straight all day, safe and steady, to finish fourth. I mean, it's not that safe or steady when you look at it, but, you know, for one of these guys. It looked like Peter Hansel would hit the big 5-0 today. To get a good time, you have to hurt yourself. It's like a boxing match. You jump in the camel grass, you hit the small dunes. If you don't do that, you don't get a good time. So for the body, it's not great. Fighting talk from Mr. Dakar, and Sebastian Loeb is fighting back. Despite having no power steering for the last 20k of the special, he took it by 13 seconds. We always seem to have a problem. Honestly, it's a real pain. We got close to the finish today and we had all sorts of issues. We nearly rolled several times, I couldn't turn the steering wheel and my arms are killing me now. And on top of that, we lost our alternator. NASA's lead is a healthy 18 minutes. Al Raji is second, but only half a minute ahead of Peter Hansel. It's Toyota, Toyota, Audi, Audi, Toyota, Toyota. You know the score. Ekstrom, Prokop, and Van Loon complete the top 10. Big news in the T3. Seth Quintero, massive favorite and overnight overall leader, lost a tire early in the day. It cost him an hour and a half and surely the title. Chaleco Lopez wanted to make amends for his water troubles yesterday, but he was another to run out of fuel, and Mitch Guthrie picked up a second win. Really good stage for us. Uh, it was a long stage. Um, I think today was like our first real taste of what the dunes are going to be like here in Saudi. Guthrie jumps to the top of the overall. Jao Ferreira gave X-Raid Yamaha a brilliant second ahead of Guillaume de Mevius, who's second. AJ completes the virtual podium. A two-minute penalty overnight took a victory away from Marek Goxal and handed a first Dakar win to Brazil's Cristiano Batista. But Marek's son Eric's drawn to a second victory today and is now very much in the T4 title fight. Rodrigo Lupe de Oliveira leads the charge for the trophy. Like his father, Mitchell Vandenbrink is a fan of the dunes and the sand. It was super tight at times today, but an excellent second place and he's up to sixth overall. Martin Matic lost one hour, 20 minutes on stage two. Otherwise, he's been perfect this year. He doesn't believe the Dakar is lost yet and is slowly but surely clawing back the time. Nine minutes clear of Vandenbrink Jr., even after almost 400 kilometers with broken front springs. Lopres back on top ahead of Vandenbrink Sr. and Walter. On the fourth day of Dakar, my true love gave to me four quarters quadding, three drivers driving, two riders riding, and one hydrogen-powered truck. 
If I don't get five gold wheel rims tomorrow, I'm going to be absolutely livid. See you then.